Hello again and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now, as per tradition, before we get into today's video, I'd like to say a big thank you to Sam Williams for sending in some awesome pictures of his Imperial Guard forces triumphing and fighting against the vile Orc Xenos horde. Although it's not really a horde because, as Sam said, isn't it beautiful when the Imperial Guard outnumbers the Orcs? Yes, Sam. That is one of the most beautiful sights to behold in the universe. I hope that you scythe down those orcs with volley after volley of lasgum fire and shells from your tanks. Anyway, if anyone else has any cool pictures they want to send in to me, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. Now, today we're going to be doing another regiment review. And we're going to be doing, by popular demand... The Talan Desert Raiders. I know a lot of you are going to be very excited for this battle, for this uh, for this regiment review. Sorry. So, as I've done with the other couple of videos, we'll start with a bit of fluff on the Talan. This is just fluff that I know off the top of my head. Um, so it's a bit of a uh, a mix of different editions because obviously Games Workshop do retcon things a little bit. Uh, but from what I understand, um, Talan was a world that was actually quite heavily involved in the Horus Heresy. And I think a bit like Valhalla used to be a paradise world, I think Talan used to be a bit of a paradise world uh, until the Iron Warriors turned up and they they did some nasty things to that planet. And it went from being a lush planet to a, a terrible desert, dry, arid desert world. Um... And because of this, there's lots of wide open spaces, and so there's lots of tank battles. And Talan is famous for being, in all recorded history, the site of the largest tank battle of all time. I don't know how many. I think there's like maybe a million tanks involved in one battle. It's some huge number, some crazy number that's involved. Um, but that's, that's sort of the fluff behind it. So uh, the Talan have, because of their... Uh, the fact that their planet is now just a, an arid desert world, they have to be very good at sort of survival in hot, dry conditions. They have to be able to move over great distances in a very short amount of time. Um, they, a lot of people, sort of say they're like um, sort of what would you call it, like Bedouin or sort of Arab Arabs in space, like sort of our Highlands or Soviet Unions in space. Destroyers think are Hungarians in space. Um, I think it's more like, um, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, T Talan players, but Talan are a bit sort of like Lawrence of Arabia in space. That kind of thing, like World War I uh, cavalry, you know, sort of you know, sort of cavalry in, in sort of the, in, in Africa and in the Sinai and against the Ottomans kind of thing. I think that's that's what it is, but I could be wrong. Um, but that's the vibe that I've all, I've always got from them. Now, let's move on. That's my sort of very quick fluff overview. They, they don't like Iron Warriors and they're very good at maneuver warfare and survival in tough, tough conditions. Um, let's take a look at the regiment trait and how does that reflect them on the tabletop. So they have the, the regiment trait swift as the wind. Masters of the Lightning Ambush, Talan warriors strike with overwhelming force before swiftly fading into the wilderness as if they were never there at all. Hit and run guerrilla warfare kind of thing. Infantry units with this doctrine can advance and still shoot any weapon type except heavy weapons. When they do so, they do not suffer the penalties to hit rolls for assault weapons. Vehicles with this doctrine do not suffer the penalty to the hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. If a titanic vehicle with this doctrine advances, it treats all heavy weapons it is equipped with as assault weapons until the end of the turn. Heavy D6 weapon is treated as an assault D6 weapon instead. So cool. All about maneuverability. Okay. All about maneuverability. So infantry units can advance and still shoot and they don't have the penalty for mo for, for advancing and assaulting with well, advancing and shooting with assault weapons so that's cool so pretty much guys 
Talan units should always be adva uh, infantry should always be advancing. It basically means your your unit characteristic movement is always six plus d six. There's no reason for you never to not not to be advancing because even if you advance, you still shoot any weapon type. And when you do so, you do not suffer the penalty for assault weapons. So that's because obviously that's just a little caveat because um, obviously if you move in advance, it would if they didn't have that in, assault weapons would be penalised. So it's just stupid. But they don't. They're great. So that's really good. Um, that's fun. That's really powerful. Um, you can still shoot after doing that, which means you can move and advance still shoot as normal and you can still do first rank fire second rank fire you don't need to use the order fours for the emperor very nice vehicles can go and move and suffer no penalties to the heavy weapons so like uh if you're often this is very powerful now with the new plasma cannon sponson uh points decrease because now plasma cannons are very popular on all the Lehman Rosses because they only lead 10 points and they're only 2 points more than heavy bolter sponsors. Well, 4 points in total. Um, so yeah, really, again, a very popular choice. It's really uh, because now you can move and advance, uh, move and shoot with your plasma cannons and not overcharge and hurt yourself on a 2. You only do it on 1s as per normal. So that's good. It just means your vehicles have been going all over the place. And it means that um, your tanks are going to be having a great time. Now, the Titanic one is interesting. But if a Titanic vehicle moves and advances, it treats its heavy weapons as assault weapons. But those assault weapons are still going to suffer the minus one to hit. Okay? So all you if you move and advance with a Titanic vehicle, you will get to shoot. Yes. But all your heavy weapons will be minus one to hit. Because it's you will have moved so it's it's not great. Okay? It's not I wouldn't be thinking too much about this in terms of Titanic vehicles. Just not well not the advancing thing. Because your your vehicles in, in general are still your Titanic vehicles will still be able to go full tilt and shoot without penalty. They will just advance at minus one. I don't think you really need to advance with them um right let's take let's break this down so this is very good for your infantry and it's very good for your tanks the interesting thing is is that i see a lot of people have said to me with my steel legion i should run them as talam because then all my chimeras wouldn't have the mass one to hit with their with the heavy bolters. Well, what's interesting is I almost feel like the Talan trait isn't in, isn't encouraging you to, t to take transports. I could be way off here, guys. But your infantry are already incredibly maneuverable, moving, advancing, and shooting, no problem. Um, I almost feel like they're not going to benefit too much from being in a Chimera. I mean, the average move distance you're going to get on your infantry units is between nine and ten inches, and still shoot. Chimeras are only really giving you an extra two to three inches move. It's not a huge, not a huge amount. So I would say that this army actually really lends itself towards mass infantry backed up by tank fire support. Um, and I think Talan loves its plasma guns. Is what is the vibe I'm getting for your tanks. Um. Now, what's interesting is so let just to sum it up, it's a, it's an obviously good trait. It's it's obviously very good. You can just be gives you great board control, and as we've talked about, board control wins games. So, here's the weird thing: why do we never see it in top tier tournament lists? Why do we never see the Talan trait used in top tier competitive lists? It looks so obviously good. It looks up there with Cadian and Catachan. It's, you know, it's, it looks good. So why isn't it seen in top lists? Well, this is something that took me a while to figure out, guys. It did. But I think 
there's two things to it, okay? One, it's not, it kind of a bit like the Valhallans, it's sort of not always an effect. Okay, it, it's a bit of on, it's sort of on the line. Because a lot of Le a lot of Imperial Guard tanks, the most popular ones we're looking at are things like the Lehman Russ, which already has a great long range capability. So, you're not really going to be moving it every turn. You might do, you know, but you're not really going to be moving it every turn. So is it really going to get the most out of the trait? Maybe not. Maybe on like a Punisher tank? Maybe. Maybe. But you're not really getting the most out of it uh, every turn. And with your infantry, again... It's really great that you can move and advance and still shoot, but you're not going to move every turn. You know you're gonna, you know you might, you know not. I'm being generalist here, guys. So you know I know I know you do want to be pushing forward, advancing every turn. That's great. Yeah, you do want to be doing that. But what's interesting is this trait would really lend itself well to like orcs, like an assault-based army, which we you know we've got an example here on the picture, um, because obviously orcs want to move. And advance and then and then charge, but with Talan you sort of you sort of move and then you advance and then you get into rapid fire range and then that's it. It's not in effect every turn, guys. I think that's what it is. Now the second reason, but but I am willing to forego that point. I'm willing to admit that well, there are times when you are pushing forward every turn, and you want those extra inches and you don't want to uh you know give up shooting and all that kind of stuff yeah i get that totally agree sometimes you just you, you're going to be moving around a lot awesome totally get it i'm willing to for, for, i'm willing to forget that point I'm, i am sort of throwing it out there as like a sort of start of a 10 it's not always going to be in effect but this is the main reason why i don't think you see it in top tournament lists okay and I know a lot of you are gonna are gonna raise your eyebrow or flat out disagree with me when I say this, but let me work through my logic, okay? Which is, it doesn't increase your damage output. Now I know a lot of you will go, well, that's just stupid talk. You know, the fact that you can move and advance and still shoot, obviously you know, increases your damage output and the fact that you can move without penalty and still shoot with your vehicles obviously increases your damage output. And it's like, okay, but it doesn't, does it? Moving and advancing doesn't increase your damage output, you know, with this trait. It just means you still get the shoot. Your damage output isn't decreased, it's just not in it's not increased, it's just not decreased. See what I mean? It's not that's why you don't see it, and you might say, "Oh, what about the vehicles? All that you know, you're not avoiding all the minus one. If you don't, if you take, you know, you're avoiding all the minus one, so therefore you're hitting more often, and your shots and everything. It's like, well, again, you're not increasing your damage output. You're just not decreasing it, which I know that which are two very different things. Very important distinction to make." Because a Lehman Russ tank with a Talan trait can just, you know, with Battle Cannon, Laz Cannon, Plasma Sponsors, can just stay still. It's got the range on all those weapons to not have to move. And if it does move, it just gets to keep its same amount of firepower. But it doesn't increase the amount of firepower it's thrown out there. Okay? And top tournament lists are all, and we've talked about this, are all about maximizing the damage output, not about protecting your units, which is again why, linking this back into the video, Valhallans are not seen on top tournament lists. You'd think with the way their vehicles never fucking die, that Valhallans would be in top lists, but they're not. Because, it, because top tournament players aren't concerned, the majority of the time, with resiliency. They're more concerned and there are exceptions that prove the rule, but they're more concerned with damage output and resiliency comes second. In terms of importance, it's how much damage can something do and then how tough something is. And if it gets both, then obviously it's a top tier unit. 
So that's why I see, think you don't see Talan and why Cadian is so great because rerolling ones or rerolling all shots does increase your damage output massively. And so does Katachan with the plus one strength. That massively affects the amount of units that, you, that you're wounding on. You're wounding most vehicles on fives with Katachan, for example. So there you go. Now there's a couple of other bits. We're already on 15 minutes. A couple of other bits that I want to talk about. Let's firstly go to the stratagem, which is ambush. Use its three command points, so it's a it's a hefty beast. Use this stratagem during deployment. Choose up to three Talan units to set up an ambush instead of placing them on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, these units can strike from hiding. Set them up wholly within seven inches of any battlefield edge and more than nine inches away from any enemy models. Basically, you get to outflank. Great stratagem. Now, bear in mind, guys, the F FAQs and various things have, have watered this down slightly, where you can only do uh, one squadron of vehicles now. You can't use this to outflank nine Demon Rusters or something. But you can do a squadron of vehicles. So, very powerful stratagem. I have used this to great effect to uh, recreate the good old days of Captain Alohem, which allows you to outflank a whole platoon. I often will spend... 6 CP on this because it's before deployment so you can spend it twice 6 CP outflank 6 units and then I use the dagger the dagger of I can never bloody pronounce this Trusaka to outflank another 2 units and I outflank 8 infantry squads with this thing mostly I outflank veterans infantry squads and officers Two veteran squ 3 veteran squads 3 regular squads and 2 officers that's what I like to outflank with that little combo very nasty, gets in the enemy's face, really gets in rapid fire range, gives you even more board control. Fantastic. Now, second thing to talk about is the relic, which is cool. Not competitive, but not uncompetitive, just cool. You have to have a pa it's the claw of the desert tigers, famously used by Captain Alrahem, absolute beast. Talar model with the power sword only, Claw of Desert Tiger replaces the model's power sword, and you get its its strength user, AP minus three, damage two. So it's a two damage power sword, but you also, each time you fight, you get to make two additional attacks. So a company commander with this is on five attacks, which is pretty good. Pretty bloody good. Now, the Warlord trait, and this is that I don't want to forget the Warlord trait is swift attacker now quite interesting this one your warlord and all friendly talan units within six inches of them can charge even if they fell back that turn that's actually quite good uh i that's actually really powerful you see what this allows you to do is if what i would say is what's really weird is people look at the talan trait and they instantly think that's for vehicles. Okay, and, and yeah, it is. But if you actually look at all the things stacked up, it's not really for vehicles, weirdly. A mass infantry army gets a huge amount of a Talan uh, regiment trait. Because what you can do is you can go mass infantry, lots of 10-man squads. And you can... Um, you, know, you can have a, a, a character there with a good close combat weapon. You can give them all power weapons as well. And you can move in advance of the table, blasting away. And then, if the enemy charges you, what you can do is you can fall back. Then you just get back in the fight to shoot them. And then use the swift attacker warlord trait to get back in amongst them. Combine this with a, with a priest. And you're looking at a serious amount of attacks with and power weapons as well very much should be considered because that tell you why that's good guys that increases your damage output because you're able to fall back shoot and charge in one turn that increases your damage output pretty significantly um and i think that's everything we've done at we've done the trait we've done the uh, warlord trait we've done the relic and we've done the stratagem that is all things to learn. So, in summary, it's a very good trait. It is powerful and gives you very good board control. Its ultimate weakness and its downfall on the competitive scene 
is the fact it doesn't directly increase your damage output. It just stops you from losing any damage output. So it's it's quite it's it's almost it's weirdly defensive in nature. It's not the right term, but I hope you guys understand what I mean. I know the Talan trait is very popular, and I hope I've been quite fair with it there. I haven't said it's a you know I haven't shit all over it. Um, but I think I've that's my theory on why you don't see it in top top tier lists. Okay. Now, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what regiment trait you want to see next. I will cover them all eventually. But what regiment trait do you want to see next? And whichever is the most popular, I'll do next. Um, also, if there's anything that I've missed, please put down in the comments below. I have done some testing with Talan and I have done my research on them. But I am not a native Talan player. If there's any native Talan players out there, put your comments down below. Highlight anything that I've missed. Disagree with me. I don't mind. Go for it. Um, I've tried to present this in a more balanced overview because a, a comment made a really good point uh, and Patreon support. So thank you very much for that. Uh, made a really good point that I sometimes approach this from a pure infantry standpoint. That is true. The reason I tend to do that is because I believe pure infantry is the most competitive and this channel is meant to be from a competitive angle with guard but i have tried to be more balanced this time with with the different tanks and stuff and how it how it and you have to be with talan because it's a very you know a lot of people see it as a vehicle based regiment anyway guys hope you enjoyed this video leave lots of comments what do you want to see next and of course i'll see you guys next time